Okay guys, welcome to the Q&A. Um, I know this is a little late. Did this about a week ago and I kept telling myself I would film it. I filmed it about two or three days ago. Accidentally deleted it. Didn't mean to do that, but I'll just go ahead and go through these again. This time I'm gonna answer. So I got about like 80 comments or something. Not a lot, but you know, we'll just do it. I think I'm gonna answer, let's answer 15 questions. I'll do a mix of like business and a mix of like personal ones since, yeah. Okay, so let's start out. With the first one, which is gonna be, and I'm every time I pick one, I'm gonna put the person that asked it, like the comment, and then I'll put it on the screen, like around here or like here, we'll see. So the first question that I got from Hello Kitty Kens. What's up, Mackenzie? Good luck on your prep. Um, why don't you do the 10K challenge? So the reason why I didn't do the 10K challenge with Max and the boys was because I was already not doing cardio. Um, I was tracking loosely, but I mean, I was hitting my macros pretty much every day, um, but I wasn't losing weight. Obviously I was stalling because I couldn't do cardio. So the reason why I didn't do the 10K challenge was because I didn't want to like, one, I didn't want to eat that much food because I know that if I did, I might be enticed to like continue to eat bad, make poor choices within the next couple days because I just know myself. So I didn't do that. Uh, so yeah, that's why I didn't do the 10K challenge. Um, Fireman Mike hitting me with the, if you could restart eight from scratch, what would you have done differently? Um, so what I would have done differently is I probably would have, for my very first supplier, I actually did not get samples. I was just like, I went from pictures that he sent me and I didn't like physically get the samples or like the pre run of stuff before. And I would not do that again because one, when you get that first sample, you kind of know like the quality that you're pretty much gonna get. And even then your very first sample, you might not get the quality you're gonna get. Cause what these suppliers like to do is they, they sent their sample that you send you is really, really good. And then um, the bulk order that you get will be completely different. Like it, they'll, they'll just switch up the material on you. They'll use like cheaper materials just because they like, obviously they wanna make a good first impression so that good first impression that they do make when you get that bulk order, they're just gonna use the cheapest stuff just because they just want your money. And I don't, I hate to scare you guys by saying that, but it's just, I'm just warning you. Um, you know what, here's a good, this here is supposed to be an ape logo. Obviously that's, I've never used an ape logo that looked like that. And you know what, he was just like, I was like, you know, he's like, it's kind of close. The logo's close, so why don't we just use it? Cause it's close. I'm like, you can't use a logo that's close and try to make it okay. Like, I'm just telling you, it gets ridiculous stuff like this. And that is why you do samples. So question number three, how old were, this is from Milan Vadher 418. How old were you when you got into the clothing business? What are some tips or advice you'd give your younger self or someone starting their own? Uh, so when I started, let's see, I'm 28 right now. I started Ape about like three or four years ago. So let's see, 28 minus four is 24. So I was around 23, 24. Uh, I've had the idea of it for a while though. Um, I actually used to, well, I'll get that into, I'll get into that, into a different thing. But um, what are some of the tips and advice you'd give yourself? Uh, definitely don't overspend. Uh, don't get a lot of inventory if you don't really have an audience to kind of like spread your brand about like i know a lot of people get excited when they think of like a brand um you know they come up with a good name good logo good like uh vibe to your brand but then you gotta also think who's gonna promote my brand like you can only do so much with social media and it, it's it's to the point now where you kind of just have to you actually have to find people to help promote your brand and you're gonna have to spend some money or 
maybe you might get lucky and have like a good connection with someone who can help spread your brand. Like for example, me, I had Max and Max just happened to, you know, blow up in social media and we've just had a, look at us now, we're, we have our own gym together and he travels the world and all this stuff, so yeah. So for my fourth question, Quattro, for those of you who know Spanish, are you as hyped as I am about the Cream Yeezy launch on the 29th? Well, my friend Cold Cuts, as you know, I took a W. I'm just gonna show it off right here. I didn't, you know what? I actually did not plan to like use this prop. Prop, prop, it's a prop, right? Look at this. Cream Yeezys. I have no clue how I'm gonna keep these clean. Like just wearing them once will already get them dirty, but yeah. I'll just leave that up here. Q and A. So yes, we'll leave this here. So yes, I was excited about it. Uh, no, I did not get multiple pairs. The bot pretty much failed. I've heard a lot of people's bots failed, which is weird because I saw a bunch of people tweet that they did get the shoes. Fifth question. How many W's have you achieved so far? But seriously, what do you think about the fitness industry as it stands currently? Uh, how many W's have I achieved, I think? So I got the cream Yeezys and legitimately I got the Zebra Yeezys, which are these, which are probably my most expensive and like quote unquote rare shoe. These go for about like 14 to $1,500. Um, I actually somehow got that, I don't know how. Um, and to answer your second, your, your first, your second question, Eric Keem, what do I think about the fitness industry? Uh, the fitness industry is right now it's, you know, honestly, it's just, it's the same as it was before social media. It's just, it's just a little bit more out there now in terms of, and by that, I mean like the whole like natural and unnatural thing. Like that's always going to be a huge thing in the fitness industry and it always has been it's just now that social media like is it's easier to put it out there on social media that's it's just what it is what do i think about it um i honestly don't care if you're natural or if you're not natural or if you claim natural or if you don't just kind of like the way i see it is if you got to put dinner on the table and you gotta lie about it what can you do right like it what can i do about it what can you do about it nothing really Question, I think this is number six. I'm gonna say this is number six. We'll just go with number six. How do you make the perfect dirt face from Cameron Joe Neal? Uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, although I do do dirt faces in all my pictures because I can't just take myself seriously when I smile or try to be like suave or something. It's like weird. Question number seven from Morgan Fam. Do you prefer bulking or cutting? That's a pretty easy question, I think, to answer. I think everyone prefers bulking uh, because eating is fun. Eight, we are on eight now. What advice would you give on someone starting YouTube? Uh, you know what? YouTube is kind of like a thing where it's really, like the, the especially in the fitness niche, it's just so saturated that it's almost to the point where you either have to know someone, AKA us, we knew Max, that's like the only reason we have subs and we are very grateful for all of you that do watch me, Bowtie, Johnny, sometimes Omar, he doesn't really film that much. Um, but we are very grateful for that. And I don't know, it's just really, it's, just, I always tell people the same thing. It's, you just have to continue coming out with content. It's hard to come out with new content. And now that everyone's like stepping their YouTube game up so much, it's so hard to break into, but you just have to figure that you're you're gonna hit a stroke of luck and some something somehow some good thing will happen to you and your channel might blow up or something. That's all it is. It's luck sometimes, unfortunately. Uh, question number nine from Zach Kravitz, guys. You gotta check out Zach Kravitz. Zach makes the most awesome videos on YouTube. I love watching all his stuff. It's almost like you're watching like like a like a TV show or like a sitcom or something or something on Netflix like. His quality and his production is so good, like you would not believe it. Anyways, his question, a really good one I like. Three tips for someone looking for a manufacturer for custom shirts. Number one, make sure the communication's always good. Um, one thing I'm gonna tell you right now, there are gonna be nights where you're up until two or four o'clock because that's just the time difference between like, for example, here in China, it's like 12 hours. 
or something. Um, uh, number two. Um, let's see. Again, with the samples, always go with never, never be, never skimp on samples. Like, don't be cheap. Samples are going to cost a lot. I'm going to tell you right now, samples usually go for like just one piece could cost you 40 to $60, depending on how much you want to custom in stuff. It really depends because you have to think they're not making it in bulk. They're making just one for you. So they're not like they have to like they can't over manufacture it. They're just making one just for you just to check it out. So I, I know that when people always hit me up, they're like, oh, you know how much are samples? It's so expensive, like just to make one. Well, that's that's just how much it's going to cost. Uh, three. Mm, three would be don't give in too easily to being told something. I guess what I mean is like a lot of these manufacturers 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 will tell you that they're working with like big name companies. All of them will tell you that. I'm just telling you that right now. Every single one of them will be like, oh I work with Gymshark. I work with Alphalete. I work with Physique Apparel. I work with Ape. I'm not saying that Ape's a big company, but that's just an example I'm throwing out there. And they will literally make fake shirts and just slap the logo on and say that they work with them. That's just how it is. Uh, question number 10. Halo Top. From, this is from Kelty O'Connor. Halo Top, Adidas, sneakers, or sushi? You can only pick one. Go. Ooh. You know what? I think I'm gonna have to go with, I think I'm gonna have to go with sushi. I really, 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 really like sushi. I don't know. It's just Asian. Asian and sushi, they just they just go together. But Asian and hype beast, that really goes together too. Question number eleven. Ooh, I like this. Uh, Stokon thirty three. Your favorite ape jogger and Yeezy combo. Um, I'm actually gonna have to say my favorite ape jogger is the olive ones because that's the ones that always get sold out the fastest. Although I'm super excited for the Merlot and the tan ones that are coming out. It would have to be that and probably these right here. These are the Oreo ones that uh, Johnny and Omar got for me for Christmas. I think it was either Christmas or my birthday. But these are my favorite ones. It's a very neutral color. It's not exactly white. It's more of like a tannish cream. So that's probably my favorite combo along with like a tan shirt from Ape. So yes, we're on to question number 12. From Eric Mandeval, what is your favorite clothing brand besides your own? Any brand that you get inspiration from? I'm gonna have to say Gymshark. Gymshark makes, they're just killing the game. They're taking every fitness person that pops up. Uh, they're coming out with really dope stuff. And I don't really know about their quality um, I haven't bought anything from them in years. The last time I bought something was when I first started Ape and I got some Gymshark hats and some stringers. Obviously that was a long time because I haven't worn a stringer in a long, long time. But the quality was, it was all right. I mean, it, it's pretty much like the same that it was when I made stringers and stuff. So it was, it was good, but I, I haven't bought any of their new stuff, but their new stuff does look really dope. And a lot of people think that I don't like Gymshark, that I don't like Alpha Elite. It's not like, especially Alpha Elite because I'm, I'm friends with Christian. Uh, we're all this, we're all pretty much the same. We just have a slap on a different logo. We have a different feel to our clothes. That's about it. That's about it. Question number 12. I think I'm on 12. From Blanco, which is Bianca. She has her own tube channel. She makes Gymshark reviews. Actually, that's usually what her videos would do well. But anyways, let me read her question. What is your top biggest business related regret? And if you could do, if you could go back, would you, what would you have done differently? My biggest business regret? Um, I would have to say it's, it's once I had, I had a lot of profit. I kind of was just like, Oh, you know, I see that sponsoring these athletes is what makes me a lot of money. Usually kind of like, that's what is generating the traffic. Uh, Although that is true, two is you have to think about brand association and also personal, whether that 
follower or like that uh, inf that social influence that you have is personable, right? So I, I could, one thing I learned was that you could literally like sponsor any person, right? Like they get like five to 10K likes, you know, that's really cool and all, but do their followers really care if they're helping this person out, if they relate to this person? You know, there's a difference between, let's, let's I'll give Max for example. Max is a very personal person, people like him. People think he's friendly. People want to be associated with him. They want to like somehow feel connected, right? And that's because he's a good person and people like him. He's a funny guy. Opposed to another social media person. I'm not saying any names. Gets a lot of likes, but do you really care about him? Or do you just like the way his muscles look, right? There's a big difference. And my regret was I tried sponsoring like I was just like trying to go crazy with the sponsoring, like, oh, let me pick this person up, let me pick this person up. And it just cost way too much money and the return was like almost zero. There's really no return on it. It's kind of like you, they expect to get paid a lot of money quick. And then they don't understand that, hey, you need to kind of, they need to, people need to see a building relationship with the brand opposed to, hey guys, Use my 10% code tomorrow. There's going to be a restock. Check it out. You'll love the clothes. I just started wearing it yesterday. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Very big difference. So that would that would be it. I, I Blake with the 13th question here. Alphalete Ape Athletes meet up in DC summer 2017. I don't know. We'll leave that up to Christian because he keeps telling me we're going to do it. And we haven't done it. And I know he's a really busy guy. So Christian, if you ever watch this, which you're probably never going to watch, even though you said you subbed to us, we should do a meetup. Question number 14 from Jake Con Lawn Fitness. How did you come up with the idea of Ape Athletics and how did you go about starting it? So, I started it because I had about two or three IG, no not IG, Twitter accounts, fitness Twitter accounts. And I figured, hey, why don't I try to start some hype around like a fitness clothing line and see if it'll like pick up. So, Came up with the ape logo, came up with the name first, the slogan, which is Unleash the Beast. Cause you know, my thing was always like, when you're in the gym, you gotta kill it all the time, right? So that was it, corny, but whatever, it worked out. Um, so we did that, generated some, I, I think I like promoted it on Twitter for a while and I was like, hey, you know, we got like three, 5,000 followers pretty quick. Why not just try to launch something? And I picked the worst thing to launch. I picked stringers and stringers is kind of like something that like not a lot of people wear unless you're like shredded unless you know you're a, a, a constant like a you're you go to the gym all the time you kind of know about it and you don't think it's weird that people wear it and people won't think you're weird for wearing it uh i would definitely if i could start over i would definitely would have gone with t-shirts first but hey it worked out so yep last question Last question is, you know what, let's, let's kind of do, you know what, let's do Ken C underscore. Do you think it's possible to run an online business and go to school as well? You know what, Ken C, I'm going to answer for that. I'm going to answer you. I'm going to answer your question right now. Pretty easily, pretty easily. Yes, it's possible. I, when I first started ape, like I said, I was prepping, right? Uh, and you could, you could Johnny, Omar, Danelle, any of like the old school like district bar people can vouch for me. Um, I was doing prep. I was doing like hours. I would do like an hour of cardio almost every day. Uh, so I'd go to work. I'd have to get to work by 7.30. I'd leave work by like around 4 or 5. Sit in traffic until 6.30. I would pray that Johnny and Omar would be late to the gym so that I could take a nap. And I actually think we used to lift around like 7.30 or 8.00. So I'd sit there and nap until 7.30 or 8, go to the gym or lift, lift until like 9.30 or 10, do cardio from like 10 or 10.30 until like 11.30 or 12, um, cool down, take a shower at the gym because I was too tired and I didn't want to drive in my car like all sweaty. So I'd do that, get back home um, around maybe one to two o'clock, stay up until three to four, sometimes five, depending on like when, the, how long I need to talk to my supplier, from from two to five sometimes. 
So yes, it's definitely possible. It's just how bad do you want it, you know? Sometimes you just have to sacrifice. You gotta make sacrifices. You gotta sacrifice some sleep, maybe? Some eating? Some gains? You never know. But anyways, guys, thank you for tuning in to this q and I hope I answered, like I try to split it up. I try to answer a little bit more business questions than I did personal questions. Uh, I gotta kind of mix of both. Uh, a lot of the business questions kind of like, they kind of like related to each other. So I, I couldn't pick a bunch of them, but thank you again for checking out the Q&A. Hope you guys liked it. Give it a thumbs up guys. Give it a comment. Cause I will reply to it. I always reply to every comment. I try, I try my best. And, oh, you know what? The next video I do, I'll, 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 I'll keep you guys a little updated. I'll give you guys a little update on the knee here and what we're doing for prep because I'm pretty motivated. I've been doing a lot of cardio and I think, I think something might happen out of this. Although I can't really see myself doing physique, but I don't know. I don't think I can do that. Anyways, guys, good luck to you and whatever you're doing this week. Kill it. Let's get it. This is going on way too long. All right, I'm, I'm ending this Q&A. Peace.